Sure, making sure everybody out there can hear me. There we go. Hello and welcome everyone out on Twitch. This is John with Rook and Rasp, and we are here again for Seriously Let's Play. Uh, today we're going to have Die Laughing, but before we get into the game, let's go ahead and meet a few of our players today. Uh, so, Corey, you want to kick us off and introduce yourself? I am Corey. I use they, she pronouns. Uh, you can usually find me here in Rook and Rasp, but you can also find me at Little Ladmas on Twitch, or on Itch, and on Twitch. You can find me both. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'm going to go across, and uh, Stacy, if you're ready. Hi, I'm Stacy. Um, I'm known as Stacy the Bard on the internet, trying to get known a little bit. <laughs> um, but I've got a YouTube, Instagram, you know, the deal. I create music and visual art. I am also... I've also been part of uh, the Mundane and the Arcane, a D&D &D Let's Play podcast. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming and joining us. Stacy was actually on the first season of Seriously Let's Play, like almost eight years ago at this point. Oh, sh that's right. I forgot so. about that. I knew, I knew we played a game together. Yeah. <laughs> I, we... forgot, I forgot it was... Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was um, you were yeah. all goblins, and it was a D&D &D 5 mm -hmm. game. But <laughs> All right, well, coming over for today for our GM for the show today, uh, Shireen. And Shireen, it's going to be your show from this moment on. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Shireen. Uh, you can find me, also known as Mad Fishmonger, and you can find me uh, here uh, fairly often, uh, I guess now, and um, kind of... Mostly on Tumblr now. Uh, and today, we're going to be playing uh, Die Laughing, which is um, a really great game in a lot of ways. Uh, and I will uh, get everybody into it. So, sorry, I've got too many things going on on my screen right now. And <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to figure out where Man. I am and what you can see. Okay, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> um, Die Laughing is by Nerdburger Games, uh, who is Craig Campbell. Uh, it's a great guy, and uh, I have written for uh, a number of other uh, Nerdburger games, uh, not this one particularly, but it is uh, still one of my favorites, and uh, we played it at Gen Con and, and that kind of thing. Um, the great thing about this, and uh, it is a game I recommend to people who uh, are not familiar with how to role play, uh, because it uses the framework and um, simplicity of movie tropes to sort of move the story forward. Uh, we are going to be playing a horror comedy game in which we will all start as uh, characters in this movie. And there will be a monster of some kind, we will decide on. And uh, that monster will be trying to murder our characters. And our characters will slowly be picked off one by one uh, as the game goes on. And then the player can become a producer and use their points to affect the scene. Uh, because it is, of course, a movie. So you are encouraged to be ridiculous uh, you are encouraged to uh, really ham it up and, uh, and just really get in character and, you know, uh, either embody a stereotype or, you know, subvert a stereotype, however you want to play it, that's fine. Um, now, it is a GM-less game in the sense that we will rotate uh, who sort of is the uh, director, where you are um, describing a scene and setting up the scene. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I will be sharing with you uh, because I have, you know, the book. Uh, <laughs> I can, and I've played before. Uh, I will help everybody out. So we've all picked uh, our characters. Uh, we are going to pick a monster momentarily. Uh, but... Uh, you guys have chosen what you need. So what's going to happen is we're going to have several scenes. And we're going to do those scenes over three acts of the movie. 
So um, Act One is about setting up character relationships and introducing the monster. Act Two will be escalating the danger, but also building the character relationships. And Act Three will come to a conclusion for the story. Um, so every time we set a scene, uh, scenes work just like they do in a movie. If we need to change location, that'll be the end of the scene. If we need to, if we sort of do a pretty sharp change of topic, that'll be a new scene, uh, that kind of thing. And it, it, it's not, it'll make sense once we start <laughs> playing. Um, so what's going to happen is there's phases to the each turn. Um, so the whoever's the director for the turn will uh, roll 2d6 and we'll go to uh, the scene in the book. We will look at the description of that and uh, I will have to send you some things. Anyway, uh, <laughs> You will um, announce what the scene is called and that, and sort of set it up with a little bit of narration. Uh, and then you will pick a lead character. So somebody in the group will be the lead in that scene. Um, and if you look at your sheet and you look at, uh, you know, sometimes uh, it'll say things like the one I have, I have an option to have, uh, you can't be forced to reduce your life pool if you're the lead character in that scene. So certain powers of yours depend on if you are the lead character or not. Um, that's right there. Uh, and so it'll go set the scene, play the scene, make your trait check, uh, use your stuff, and then resolve the scene. And then phase five is deal with death if that is occurred, you know, happens in that. And then we change the scene. Um, the game will end when all but one of the characters are wrapped or some other ending kind of works itself out in terms of the movie. Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so, uh, there are a few things, um, we can just set up, uh, before we get started. Uh, what now we, we kind of have the, the overall topic of a horror comedy, but if we want, I do also have, uh, the, uh, sequel or the supplement Die laughing to die laughing gur, um, <laughs> which, <laughs> which gives you the option uh, has some more some more characters, but one of the fun things uh, and some more monsters, but one of the fun things it uh, suggests uh, optional, so we can just think of these as you know optional film styles. So uh, if we want to add a sort of other layer to our generic horror comedy movie. Uh, you could we could do an art film. Uh, so you know maybe it's uh, being made by university students or something like that. Uh, you could do a B movie. So we could do like you know terrible special effects, huge plot holes, you know bad costuming that kind of thing. Uh, yes. We could do a found footage style. Uh, you know, Blair Witch Project nice. etc. Uh, style. Mm -hmm. Could do a very gothic style where it's all drippy and romantic and candles. Uh, you could do a very grindhouse style, so low budget, high gore. <laughs> um, now, this one is a real challenge. Hayes Code uh, era, which is uh, was between uh, 1934 and 1968 in uh, Canada, in the U.S. There was a very strict code of conduct uh, that all films had to take, which is why they all like very Pollyanna 
you try and watch them. Um, so there's a lot of like, you cannot have sex or, or use drugs or if, and if you show anyone who does those things, they have to be punished for it. Um, you can't show gore of any kind. So you would see a lot of movies where like someone would pull out a gun and shoot the other person and the person would just go, uh, and fall down. And that was it. And then somebody else would run over. Oh my goodness, this man has been shot. And there was like just a guy laying on the ground, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a challenge. Uh, there's another uh, option here is in the style of. So if you happen to be, uh, we happen to have a movie buff in the crowd, you know, who's like super into Spielberg or, you know, um, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Or I was thinking of the guy with the colors and the. Like Dario Argento? No, it'll come to me. It'll come to me and like, really. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's like right on the tip of my brain, with the uh, Steve Zissou and the underwater guy. Oh, in that movie. oh, oh. Uh... Wes, not Wes Anderson. Yes. Wes, okay, Wes what? Anderson. Oh, that was that was, was, was right on the tip of Wes Anderson. It was right on the tip of my brain. It was driving me crazy. <laughs> Um, All I could think of was Freddy. <laughs> See, I was thinking of uh, Dario Argento with uh, the original oh, yeah. Suspiria, which was yes. really about colors and weird stuff. So Yeah, it's trippy. Uh, and the last two options are a parody uh, and uh, like Shaun of the Dead or, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Or uh, like a very self-aware style movie like Scream, that kind of thing. So those are options uh, that we can layer on. But if we want to kind of set, the, we can we can kind of set a vague tone for the movie if we want at first, uh, and then just see what happens. We can lean into a tone right here if anybody has any particular anything's really like I want I want to do that. I'd be down for the found footage or the grindhouse, but uh, okay, how about for y'all? Okay. This so should be how, pretty fun. Okay. So we're 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 gonna lean to some gore, but we're gonna lean into like low budget gore. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. okay. I like it. I like it. Uh that'll be great. Um so who's so I've got uh the jock. Uh I decided she um she's a hockey player. Uh, her name is Juliana Augusta, because that's what the random namer <laughs> brought up for me. Uh, she has uh, a mullet, which when I was a kid was called hockey hair, because it was for the hockey players. They wanted to have long hair, but you couldn't have it in the front or it would get in your mask and you couldn't see when you were playing hockey. So you had to, it's the most Canadian thing ever. Um, uh, and she has a, an NHL tattoo. Uh, of her favorite of her favorite team i haven't decided what that is yet um uh and uh so she has a uh a hockey stick and uh my other option for stuff is a six pack of beer or abs my choice and i'm actually having a really hard time deciding uh, <laughs> if i i think i'm leaning on the abs though i think she's gonna have six pack abs yeah i'd um, lean into the abs yeah uh, so I think I will start as the director. Um, and give me two seconds and I am just going to have to put, uh, yeah, you know what? I'll just take screenshots when necessary. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I've got it on PDF as well. So, uh, you just need to like, you need to be able to see uh, what the options are for the scenes. So okay. uh, we are going to start in phase one. I will start as the director. Uh, now, it's usually that the lead player, I think, what is it? The person to your right or something like that, uh, which is kind of hard to do. On a, uh, but uh, Stacy is uh, to my right in the chat here. So uh, your character is going to be the lead. Uh, for this. Cool. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to show when I went to Gen Con, uh, I was able to snag uh, 
Craig had some die laughing dice made. You need 66. Uh, and they're all in this blood red and, and it's got the little die laughing guy for a number for a one when you roll a one. Yeah. So, um, I, I love the font that they used yeah. on that die too. Yeah, it's really fun. It's the same as the the one in the oh, so we have to decide the monster. Sorry, I forgot the monster part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now we're all going to kind of get a chance to uh, see the monster and um you know control the monster as a uh an option like when it's your turn as the director so uh it kind of depends on like what's going on with the scene so there are so there are 24 monsters available in this book Wow. Okay. Uh, we'll keep that down. Should we pick a uh, number? <laughs> so the option is you can pick a number or we can roll some dice. Let's roll some dice. Let's roll some That's dice. always my favorite yeah, one. Absolutely. So and it would be a D24. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you can do that on a, a search engine or something. Let's see. D twenty four. Oh, yeah. What do we got? Who's gonna? Would you like me to roll? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Roll Sorry. <laughs> Seven. Seven. Okay. One, two. <laughs> Three, four, <laughs> five, six. The suspense. Seven. <laughs> Dismemberment goblins. Ooh, my favorite. Ooh. Uh, okay, now I would like uh, Corey to roll a d6. Light red one. A one? The one. Okay, we are at a campsite. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let me two seconds to find a screenshot of this. And, uh, well, I'll send that later if it's necessary. So, uh, all right, so we're at a campsite. It's about dismemberment goblins. Now, is it dismemberment goblin? Like, are we talking like actual goblins or are these like, is it like you really like dismemberment so you're called a dismemberment goblin? I mean. Oh, that's a good. Well, well I'll find out, I guess. <laughs> mm. I okay. had to ask. Sorry. I mean, no, 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 that's a great question. Uh, let me put this in here. And phase one, set the scene. Okay. So since I'm the director for the scene, I'm going to roll 2d6. That is a 6 and a 1, so a 7. I will look in the Act 1. Scene 1. Okay. Seven. That is... Oh! <laughs> um... We immediately have a monster attack? Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay. So, this is like one of my favorite movies, uh, Duel to the Death. It opens ninjas. Ninjas are attacking. That's how it opens. So, uh, <laughs> although I think we're not supposed to do that for have a monster attack. I don't think we're supposed to have a monster attack for the first scene. But you know what? Whatever. Um, I mean, it's Halloween. We can have fun. Halloween. Yeah. We're going to just start start with some uh, some monster attack. Okay. This is when we started recording for the found footage. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, right, right. Okay. We're so we're at uh, we're at a um, 
we're at a campsite. So why are we camping together? What's our uh, why? Why is why is my hockey playing Canadian jock hanging out with you, nerd? <laughs> I, I got a reason. I guess I, I, I definitely have something to pull us together if y'all are up for it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my character is a paranormal investigator, and he needs a crew. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's fantastic. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of had a character worked out for this. So if you'd like me to nice. give you a little bit of information on that, so we could roll it in, but uh, well. We're yeah, Ari. Okay. Uh, okay, so I said that... Who did I say was the lead player? I am. Um, okay, so you get to choose which other characters are going to be in the scene. You can choose both of them. Oh, yeah, we're, we're in. Are, are we going to introduce our characters um, at any point? Well, we're trying to decide how we start the movie. So since oh, no, our movie... Okay. Since our movie is beginning with a monster attack, which yeah. is unusual, do we want to introduce the characters and then have them be attacked? Or do we want to uh, introduce them after? Introduce them after. Yeah, let's Is do this going to be let's... like a flashback? Like we're in the middle of this scene and then all of a sudden the movie, then it stops and then we go back and it starts again? <laughs> like before that moment? Yeah, you might be wondering how I got myself in this situation. <laughs> I was picturing like the found footage meets like uh, what? What is the TV show The Office? Yes, where we're also yes covering. Yeah, until we die. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so oh, we're all asleep in our tents. Um, and. I, yeah, I think we're all asleep in our tents, and so the camera pans in, and there's just, you know, a very normal-looking campsite, uh, the, the fire's been put out, and then goblins attack. So, uh, you, as the lead player, uh, or the lead character... What, how are yours? How is your character? You can, and now you can introduce your character and uh, tell me what your character does. All right, my what? character is the mad scientist named Madame Twist, Madame Cyan Twist. <laughs> I am here conducting an experiment, both social and otherwise, tagging along with the um. <laughs> with the paranormal investigator but I really want I really want parts I really want some goblin parts because I, I really need them I do, I do, I need them for to science reasons science <laughs> so you reminding me of the, the scientist from um, uh, the lost skeleton of Cadavera I'm doing because... science honey <laughs> Not because yeah. I want to create my uh, my cute little goblin GF or anything. <laughs> so are these uh, actual goblins? Uh, as in little like monster creatures? Or are they uh, feral humans who have gone goblin mm -hmm. mode? Uh, mm -hmm. As John suggested earlier. With, with body mods. They did body mods Ooh. to make them look like goblins. Okay. Even better. Dismemberment <laughs> <laughs> goblin. I need okay, so I need I'm I'm amending. I need their brains. I need to study their brains. Okay. <laughs> Please um, not to destroy their heads. So uh how do how do you get attacked? What, um, what is your tent like? Kind of like a little dome, you know, one of those standard dudes you get from Kmart. I'm kind of in a, <laughs> I'm in a sleeping bag. I kind of left, I kind of left the uh, zipper open a little bit to vent because it is hot. And it's hot as I'll get out in there and I just don't feel like being soup tonight. Um, 
lo and behold, someone comes in and uh, starts <laughs> trying to gnaw on my leg. <laughs> So you Today. wake up, you wake up screaming. I assume. <laughs> Chimney cricket. <laughs> what um. is going on? Turn on my camera. Night vision. Oh, this is where we're getting the found footage, right? Of yeah, course. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, your your leg is being chewed on by, by a feral human with body modifications. And the first thing you do is grab your phone and turn on the camera. So grab my multi-tool. <laughs> I love and, it. And attempt to jab him in the face. And get him off me. I'm pretty short. I forgot to mention. Oh, I'm four, okay. I'm 50, I am 58 years old and four foot three. <laughs> Just a little plumptious. That's great. <laughs> I love it. Um, Corey, your tent is next. What? Uh, you you wake up to to screaming. It's probably less. Tint and more, it, she's a braver, found a tree limb that would support her weight because she's like hilariously only just six inches taller than Madame Cyan. <laughs> Four foot nine, absolutely nothing. <laughs> so she's already squad. <laughs> Maybe that's why we have the goblins. They want us. Yeah. We are the ideal size. <laughs> <laughs> We've been trying to harvest like good, strong, short limbs for so long. <laughs> Mouse, as she is called, I just kind of groggily looks around, fumbles for her own phone, turns it on to get both the flashlight and the camera because funny sounds. It's me, your girl. Might as well go live for this. Why are be screaming here like just <laughs> clamors down tree. if there's nothing at the base of her tree because she expects bear raccoon mm -hmm. like oh there's a bear yeah, we'll, just, yeah. we'll just crawl down and stick a camera in its face it's fine <laughs> <laughs> like well something got into the tent so she's gonna go investigate yeah and probably doesn't scream she squeaks being faced with a goblin <laughs> like the mouth goes open but all you hear is a nothing else <laughs> that's so great uh and, like just blind react raver boot kick <laughs> so, nice. like hey out of there <laughs> when she finally <laughs> finds her voice <laughs> uh, did you ask for consent <laughs> Consent to chew on my leg, yes. <laughs> oh, uh, this person. Do we know each other before this? Either? Probably. Yeah, quit quit yeah. chewing on my aunt's leg. Aunt. <laughs> Love it, man. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I love it. Well, we're short enough. We might as well share the same jeans somewhere. Right. I mean, <laughs> thankfully I was wearing thick jeans because I'm crazy. I sleep in jeans. Well, no wonder no, you're hot. No rules. <laughs> no, oh, that's so uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like it when it burns when I pee first thing in the morning. Uh, John, I think your character uh, will have woken up to this nonsense at this point. <laughs> yeah, the goblin that just got kicked into your wet sleeping arrangement. <laughs> well, uh... You know, it's all our characters, our first moment on screen. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't seen uh, my character. And uh, I imagine as all this is going on, the chaos, you try to kick uh, this goblin thing away. It trying to gnaw on your leg. Uh, <laughs> a knife 
pokes through the edge of the uh, of the tent and starts slowly cutting down at the opposite end from where you are uh, or from the opposite end of where they have come in from so probably close to your head (laughs) and ripping open is my character Morgan Graves and he uh, paranormal investigator by the way uh, he says to you hey I'm supposed to be on camera first and uh, swings wildly with a microphone across the front of the screen to nice. hit this thing across, you know, across the jaws. It's trying to gnaw on you. Nice. That's amazing. There's probably oh a very satisfying Foley moment right there. Oh my God. I'm dead. No, I'm not dead. I'm <laughs> You're very much alive. I'm very much alive. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> my character is not in the scene yet, um, because, uh, the director's character is in the scene, unless you're the only one left. Um, so now what we're going to do is, um, do our trait checks. Uh, now just remember that if you have a cork or a stuff, uh, that you could use that is accurate to this you don't have to use it right now you can only use them once so um or you can sorry uh i think you can use them twice so (laughs) you can use each of them twice so think about when you want to use them it's fine if you do now don't don't worry about it uh (laughs) and then what we're gonna do is use what uh your so the monster attacks each player in the scene chooses which of their characters traits they use to deal with the monster so some on the monster character sheet uh it has target numbers and so parts uh so depending on the monster you know some of them are not very bright so you could outthink them some of them aren't very physically strong you could beat them up so the uh your target number is going to depend on what the monster has um so what you're going to do is decide which one you want to use so which uh of your stats your stats are body brains mouth and spirit so that's your physicality, uh, your intelligence and wisdom, your charisma, and your willpower, essentially. And in this system, the lower the number, the better, correct? So what you're going to do, uh, no, we're going to uh, roll all of the dice that you have. Okay, so here's here's an example. Let's say your character has to make a body check against target number four. Let's say your character's body score is two. Pick up all of your dice and roll them, assuming in this scenario you have four. You roll one, three, four, and six. You get two hits, meaning your body score is two. You have to roll higher than that. Oh, Oh, that makes sense. So you have to get as many hits as the target number. So you want to hope for many high rolls. Um, and then we'll see what happens after that. So first you get to pick what uh which of your traits are you going to use to attack the monster and what was mouth again that's like your charisma and your um intimidation and that kind of thing all right that's just case sheer annoyance so (laughs) so annoying so if i try to bite them it'll be a body check um yeah not a a mouth check (laughs) Check, no. <laughs> Puppy. 
Nah, Which that's part? my Freddy boy. Your Freddy, not Lizzie. Yeah, he's the he's our sixteen year old. He's a good good puppy. Good boy. He he may yes. crash behind us. No. no. Oh my god. She's I love when they're world. old. They got the white face and they're just like <laughs> so huggable. Just want to pick him up and squish him. <laughs> so, okay. oh, I don't know. I that. think anyway. In Mouse's case, she's just gonna be like squeaking at them, just like get off of her. Come on, <laughs> you know better. Didn't your mama raise you better? Just <laughs> distracting. Yeah. So it would be a mouth check for her. Okay. So you're going to roll all of your dice. So we have all six now because we're starting with a, a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, which now, is... my character does have the charismatic quirk uh, with a silver tongue quality. When I make a mouth check, my target number is always three. Oh, there you go. So. Nice. Okay. So you are trying to get a mouth check. You need five hits. Well, all six landed because I rolled four fives and two sixes. Oh, yes. So you managed to, uh, I'm assuming there's two goblins who are talking to each other. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't read you the, the description here. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> the basics. A bunch of three-foot-tall goblins from Goblinland have decided to take a little dismemberment vacation. You have members, right? <laughs> Prepare to lose them. They speak in funny voices <laughs> and can't agree on who the leader is. So, the goblins were busy arguing with each other over your leg. And then, <laughs> uh, and then Mouse came along and actually managed to distract them enough that they're paying attention. Uh, all mouth and... no brains <laughs> <laughs> now Morgan what were you going to use oh sorry so uh, Morgan uh, he flailed at them with the microphone mm -hmm. so that's going to be a body check okay so you need three hits alright so I rolled a three and my, my target number is a three. The, so is yeah. it meter beat? Yeah. Meat awesome. is good. Yeah. All right. So yeah, three, three, four, four, five, and a two. So five of them hit. hit. Nice. Mm -hmm. So they get distracted, they get walloped, and then, <laughs> and then a Madam Cyan twist. What is your, uh, what, what are you going to roll? Oh. It's a body check because I decided to do a stabby stab, and okay. that's four, but I am batshit crazy, so if I roll at least one <laughs> hit, I can re-roll up to three dice. Ooh, nice. I can nice. Yeah. All right, so. so you immediately kick the crap out of the goblins. Uh, oh, wait. Do I have to roll? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, I got two hits, so I'm going to re-roll three more dice. I'm, I'm going to put my heavy one in dice jail. <laughs> it's pretty, but it's not going to work so well. Okay, so I just got two hits. Just two? Okay. So, when you fail... Uh, uh, oh! Uh, I biff it. So you, yeah. So something something happens. Maybe you're um, a little bit injured. Yeah. Maybe I I I nick myself with my multi tool <laughs> across the face, like yeah, a you're flash. Trying so hard to hit it, but um, I did pop something in the chat there. Do you want to check that real quick? I'm just trying to find. Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, which which chat is it? Is it in the um in the Rook and Rob. chat? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I'm gonna go in. Okay. Yep. I see that. Okay. Now. Are you gonna let 
I'm always, always yeah. every single time I play this game, I cannot remember this one specific. Do you ever have like there's like a a thought that will not fucking sit in your brain? It's like every time you try and remember, mm -hmm. it, it just slips away. Yeah, it's exactly how how you lose the dice specifically. I'm pretty sure it's when you fail. But yeah, what did you want me to look up? Um, no, it's just there for you because we are going to be switching directors right away. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to keep looking at that. Uh, so we're going to switch to someone being the director. Aha, there you go. Okay. Uh, you, okay, if you succeed on the check, narrate how your character succeeds, then choose pl one player other than yourself who is involved in the scene. That player reduces their life pool by one die. If you fail on the check, reduce your life pool by one die. So, uh, we're already losing <laughs> dice. Yeah. Um, your character Stacy failed, so you lose one dice. Uh, Corey and John you both succeeded, so you get to pick who loses a dice. Oh. I uh, I would say I, I, think... I, I would take it. You know, like maybe one of them grabs a hold of my hand or you know lashes out yeah. as I try and sweep past them. Yeah, I'm definitely... I, I like my aunt. Sorry, Morgan. <laughs> You're taking that hit for my success. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. I love it. <laughs> Co-opetition. I'm good. I feel so loved. <laughs> so yeah, I'll take that one hit. So that puts my dice pool now at five? Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's why I said having the physical dice makes it a little bit easier to keep track because if you're just doing a Digital dice, can, you, you might get, I don't know how your brain works, but I would get confused. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So the player to the left of the current lead player becomes the new lead player. Uh, which on oh. my, on my stream, uh, what does that look like? Uh, I guess that's Corey. Oh, okay. I bring the new lead. Um, so you will be the lead player backtracking for just a second because John also succeeded with Morgan's yes. thing does he also need to assign a boss? Yes. He can choose to take it himself. Oh, okay. I thought if it's a successful one, you have to choose somebody else other than yourself. Well, it does say yes other than yourself. I'm sorry. You were you caught that <laughs> and I did not. Ooh. I mean, Alright. I can take the hit. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Everybody's down one. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Other than yourself. Okay. Everybody's down <laughs> I, one except me because I wasn't there. Except you. <laughs> you aren't there. <laughs> um, but that will now make Stacy the director. There. So uh, you are going to roll 2d6 and add them together. And then you're going to look at this part. Where is it? What's pages on here Ooh. so we're still in act one where is act one uh, act pages? one scenes are 40 page 44 or 45 okay, there we go wow yeah. okay so you roll the two dice add them together look at what that scene um is supposed to do uh and then the lead mm -hmm. Wait, that's uh, actual. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I got lost. <laughs> I'm just trying to find the... Here we go. Got it. All right. Could you run that by me one more time? I couldn't I couldn't okay. listen and so find the page at the same time. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so who's the director again? That was... Corey. That's... Corey is the director. Okay, me? So... Okay. You will. No, I'm, the, I'm sorry. I'm the director. Corey's the, the main character. The lead player, right? 
<laughs> okay. So, you have to roll 2d6 and add them together. Yep, okay, I got 10. Okay, so look at Act 1, Scene 10, and you'll describe that. Okay. Oh, what? And then, okay. um, and then Corey gets to decide who they want in the scene with them. Okay, you ready for this? I didn't look. The lead player can inv okay can invite a maximum of two other characters. Oh, sorry, that's not. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be the scene. Oh, I have to set up the scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, who do you want so to be? We've we've shaked off, shaken off the goblins yep. with this amazing attack. Mm -hmm. Yep, so good. So, now, now okay. So, um one of you is kind of hanging out kind of off in the distance, not really just kind of not paying attention. I'm I'm sure I'm actually pretty sure it's our jock because she was kind of out of the last scene. Yes. And we've got <laughs> we've got our main character. So we've got uh my, we got my niece. I forgot what you do. You're like a raver or a stoner? Mm -hmm. Stoner. Okay. She's stoner. stoner. <laughs> we got the stoner and we got the paranormal investigator. And one of y'all is flirt. One of y'all is flirting with the other. I'll let you choose. <laughs> um, you know Cody what? Decides who's in the scene with her. I think is there a, yeah. is there a limit yeah, in, in the? Scene. Does it describe a limit in terms of characters in the scene? Oh yeah, uh, it says a maximum of two other characters. Oh, okay, well that's all Sorry. we have right now. So yeah, yeah, if they invite if they invite two characters, one of them is the recipient of the flirting. And one is observing from afar. So, ah, so ah, see, you're one flirting. Of you... You're flirting with one of these guys, and one of the others is kind of just watching <laughs> in horror, <laughs> horror or fascination, or both. Yeah, I am scaroused. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so you're uh, the lead, and one I'm of us is flirting it. with you. Yes, I will let you decide who that that is. Well, this is a totally appropriate time for flirting, you see. Oh, absolutely. So. <laughs> well, it, and flirting yeah. can be done in the dumbest ways in these movies. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shireen, do you want... I mean, uh, the yeah. ace in the room is perfectly knowledgeable of all the times flirting happens in these dumb movies. So uh, if you want me to do it, I can, but... Go for oh. it. Yeah. yeah. Let's have some fun here. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> We've gotten away. We've ran through the woods, and we're still at the campsite somewhere. Maybe we stop up on a porch of a cabin that we find. And mm -hmm. uh, how were you took a point of damage? How were you hurt? I uh, probably since I have established that I'm wearing raver heels to myself, like a normal human height. <laughs> probably twisted my ankle in the mad rush to get away so I'm just hobbling along on like 10 inch platforms at the toe <laughs> totally appropriate for being in the woods yeah so uh, of um. course Morgan uh, is like you know how uh, let me help you and so it's your boot that it, your boot is what got hurt your, your platform uh, yeah. shoe yeah I and probably so should take these off so he will stop and help you either take your shoe off or use the microphone to try and repair it the, to make edit a <laughs> a way for the heel to still work. I I think the wisest choice here is probably just to take this off if we're going to be running. Which of course, uh, so <laughs> it's quiet. The music, the you know, only the sounds of the wind as he unzips your platform boots. That probably I imagine have a thing going up the side. Uh, you know, yeah, the zipper you... up the side unzips it. Cameras following that oh, pan God. shot, <laughs> and he slowly slides the boot off, looking up at you while kneeling. <laughs> 
you know, and, and of course the audience is all like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> this is murder. And then you just see me like in the background of this scene. I'm like sleepwalking. <laughs> <laughs> Random, like just, she's wearing like a big NHL jersey and it's like, you know. Oh, and since this is a found footage film, and we, I described that panning, so I, yeah. I'm holding the camera in my hand as I'm unzipping <laughs> for that found footage moment. I can't wait to bring this back to show the homies. <laughs> when you start, because you always have a tripod in your pocket, you like popped it down and put the other phone there. Yeah. So that you had also had a wide shot, and that's where you see my character sleepwalking. <laughs> through the background and kind of stumbling a little bit and then kind of so, half away. Like, what? And, uh, you know, and so Morgan looks up at you and he's just like, so uh, mm. I was coming up with names for the show. I was thinking something with ghosts and I love coffee. So uh, what do you think of a little bump and grind? <laughs> now it's, it's straight faced. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is just like, where are you showing this exactly? Are you, are you, you're oh, not doing Oh, A&E will buy anything. Come on. Maybe a &E late night with a name like that. Or History Channel. <laughs> they, they, they've, they've given up on that topic. Uh, History. Don't remind me. Yeah. I so. can't even get Woodstock right these days. Aliens at Woodstock? Come on. It's just a good couple of doses and a lot and of love. That's what they want you to believe. <laughs> and so uh, I need, I'm guessing with the flirt, I need to make the mouth t test that's listed. Yeah. What does it say in the scene? It, it says have... uh, for flirt, mouth TN3. Yeah. So I've got a target number of three. Yep. Let's see. We got to pull up my character. Does it say how many people in the scene have to make the check? Uh, doesn't it doesn't say even say. No. Okay. No. I think it's everybody. All right. All right. So, uh, my mouth skill is two because I'm a charismatic. Uh... Oh, hey, there we go. Uh, I got uh, one success. <laughs> I got one success, so yes. Um, okay. I rolled a two, one, 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 oh, no. one. Actually, no. I guess that one wouldn't have counted. So, well, yeah. Still four ones and a two. Okay. Uh. I need that. So I have to have three hits all above. So rating on my mouth the trait, which is one. Uh, yeah. All five of mine hit this time nice. again. Three fives, so a six, and a two. <laughs> so sounds like John's character is gonna end up really awkward. That you're gonna get off some really good zinger. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm stumbling into the scene in the background, uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna roll to see. Uh, I'm going to say that she finally trips over something. Oh, she's carrying her hockey stick. So she finally trips over her own hockey stick and uh, wakes herself up. Uh, and then we'll see if I get any good. My mouth is two. And that's a one and a one and a... Oh, three fives and a four. So I do. Uh, all right. So how are, how is the scene going to play out? Or we did that. I you, you were so you were like. Oh, I don't so know. After that, you're old. Uh, I, you you're know. like you're like I'm so smooth with my camera pan of the zipper and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm just and here comes, I mean, Forty Shades has speaking. nothing on this. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> and then enter the hockey player. Who? Not gonna lie. The entire time I'm looking at like the background when we're talking about a character's pre-show. I can't help but picture like Carlac, but human. Yeah. From Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah. 
That's what I'm <laughs> oh, she's she's like carrying a hockey stick with her. Yeah. Half asleep. <laughs> and then here comes this hockey player, six pack abs. Yeah. Just stumbling so, into yeah. the scene, uh, interrupting the moment. Uh, I laugh. Not sure about Morgan. Some... <laughs> what was all that noise? I'm not going to cause you pain with an Australian accent. I Don't worry about it. <laughs> Morgan it looks will... back over his shoulder. <laughs> Nothing. And strides away. <laughs> That's a goblin problem. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, so I succeeded, so I'm going to pick, hmm, I'm going to pick on John, I'm going to pick on John, <laughs> and blow, lose the dice, Ooh. even though he's losing a dice for that horrible flaring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now Corey has to decide. I, I don't quite want to pick on John that much. No, come on, it's I've part of the game. I've already bruised his ego. Okay, yeah, you, you take one additional wound from the bruised nice. ego. Nice. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mind. That's literally the game. Is uh, I, I've never seen a game where anybody lives, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have a sneaky suspicion Morgan Graves might be the first to go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's totally gonna die first. <laughs> Unless he holds on to those. I know, right? It could, it, it could change. It could change. Two. We don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's. So that's the end of that scene. Now we're gonna move everyone. Everything moves over one. So now, John, you're the director. Your character is not in the scene. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's going to die off camera. You're the lead player. Yeah. And you're the lead character. I the director. Since... You're the director. Sorry. Yeah. You're the lead character in so, the scene. Yeah. All right. So I'm so, director. You're lead. Or who's lead? No, well, you're the lead. You're lead. I'm lead. I'm, yeah. Yes. Okay. And now the I'm the one directing sorry, the scene. I missed, I missed that. Aww. I messed that up. So you'll get it. You'll get a turn next. You'll be next to be director. Um, mm -hmm. So roll your two d six, two d six, and find the scene. You know, it was page forty four. Uh, just for the record, that's a double one. <laughs> so wow! <it's> two... <laughs> yeah, it's a voiceover, which is a special trait check. Uh, the lead player performs a voiceover monologue for their character describing what's going on in the story so far and the relationships between the characters. They then choose Ooh. one other player to make a TN4 trait check of their choice based on what the other character was doing in their narration. If the trait check fails, the target player loses a die as normal. If the trait check succeeds, the lead player loses a die. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> so it has your chance for a heartbroken monologue. Well, uh, we kind of went with that. I mentioned earlier that idea, that flashback of explaining how did yeah. we get into this situation. Yeah. And so I imagine uh, somewhere in an unknown suburb, the camera, you know, f fade out from the scene as my character was walking away, fade into this, uh, you know, the, the camera descending down into a suburban area, looking at a driveway where our characters are packing up a station wagon with uh, the different camping gear and equipment and everything else. And uh, going around the group, because it's how did we get here and the relationships between the characters. Uh, so Stacy and Corey, uh, since you are related, we'll say we're at Stacy's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, that's where everybody was meeting to load up this vehicle. Uh, and I imagine, what what do you think, like, uh, dialogue, as this, this camera pans down onto the two of you, uh, 
I'm, oh, she know. can't be in the scene because she's the director. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That's right. She's I'm, in the bathroom I'm just or lead. something. Yeah. You just see, like, various, like, snack foods being chunked out of a yeah. pantry. I'm not even yeah. in the camera. It's just literally somebody in the pantry. <laughs> Bags. Boxes of, boxes of research notes. <laughs> research notes on the boxes. Like, actually yeah. scrawled on the cardboard. Uh, I'm just there to lift things. <laughs> you were hired as the muscle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd be very delicate with this one. <laughs> okay. Well, oh. It might spill. <laughs> Why do we need this stuff to go camping? And, uh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> I imagine that for uh, Morgan, he's on the phone and he's got a computer out that maybe he's like set up on something. And he's making sure, okay, all right, no, I, I just, okay, I see that the funds have been deposited. Thank you very much. Uh, we will get back to you. Excellent. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I uh, hang up the phone. I'm like, hey, all right, we got a live one. Somebody has, uh, we've officially got it paid off. We are going to have access to this camping site. No one else has been there, it looks like, for about 20 years. So everybody excited, everybody ready? Yeah. Let's do this. All right. And Remember, <laughs> driver has control of the music. <laughs> so long as I'm back for my game on Monday. <laughs> All right. And so uh, I would say that's probably a good place for that scene. Uh, so special trait set up. Uh, Shireen, for your character, mm -hmm. uh, loading things up. Let's get that body check going. Okay. I have a, a body of one. Oh, no. All so right. <laughs> that's, that's going to be good. Uh, so no matter what, to... you're pretty much going to get it. Yep. I'm Yay! <laughs> and I'm down one. Yeah. <laughs> because of my muscles. <laughs> You're just so intimidated <laughs> by all my muscles. By my six pack. I think she uh, wears a, a too big uh, hockey jersey that uh, she's cut to show off. Like it's such a crop top now. To show yeah. off the, uh, the abs. And she nice. worked hard on those, okay? She's... Absolutely. It's, it's the, uh, the Remy LeBeau style crop top from. Exactly. exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sport. Um. <laughs> I was just thinking it'd be so funny if Morgan died in the pro. <laughs> Could it happen? One day left. <laughs> One left. But if that's the end of the scene. Uh, everybody was in the scene. Uh, I gotta do. Yeah. I think I gotta do a mouth check because I was talking. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow! Well, I was well it like, says then choose one player, one other player, well, to make the choose TN choice of their story. choice. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's the that's the last test. Was that All one? Right. So oh. I believe we are uh, going mm -hmm. into Act Two. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yes. Uh, oh, no. Act two. Oh, no. Act two ends. Sorry. Uh, oh, no. We still in act one. Yeah. Because act one mm -hmm. ends once a character has been wrapped or two or more characters mm -hmm. have three or less dice. That'd be oh. me. So. Yeah. That's yeah so we have one. one we have one. one. Okay. So we could do another scene in act one. Uh, so this time, John, you're the director. All right. And Corey will be the lead. Or no, I will you're be the, you're the, lead. the lead. I'm the lead. Now you're the lead. All right. Okay. So rolling my 2d6 and adding it together. Yeah. And then that'll <laughs> oh, wrong dice there. All right. I rolled a two and a two. So that gets us to four, which is discover something odd. Dun, dun, dun. So, uh, hmm. 
while you're sitting on the scene, uh, and my character has walked off. Since, so, so uh, since I'm director, that's where I, I have walked away. Uh, the rest of you hear something odd. So the setup is the characters discover something out of the ordinary. It might be evidence of the monster. It might be something weird or gross. It might be a strange smell. Uh, We're so in a cabin, I, aren't we? Yeah, I'm gonna say cabin that in the woods. You hear mechanical sounds like uh, gears turning mm -hmm. and maybe just a slight hiss of steam coming from inside the cabin. Ooh. We should uh, probably go check that out. Yeah, I'm going to choose to have both of you in the scene with me. Uh, um, yeah, you're going to want me in this one, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I'll be like, huh, that's weird. I didn't think anybody else was up here. Let's go, and I'll just walk up to the door. And, <laughs> uh, I'll go to start to open it, and then I'll be like, oh, wait. And then I'll knock. <laughs> um, and I'm assuming I don't get an answer. You do not get an answer. So uh, I'll just, I'll creak the door open. With my hockey stick. All like, right. Somewhere below your roof. How tall is... Uh... Uh, I'm six foot six. Ha <laughs> okay, you are, Carlac. <laughs> Have you ever uh, seen... Uh, whatever, what what was it? The the movie with Bruce Campbell, Evil Dead. Oh, Evil yeah. Dead. Yeah, yeah. The, I was going to say, which that, one? <laughs> that cabin. As the yeah. door opens up, you see that large central foyer... Yeah. Uh, a hallway going down the center of room off to the side and a large open, uh, you know, entry into the basement, into the floor. <laughs> well, I'll look okay. around uh, and then, I mean, obviously I need to go check out the basement. Um but I'm looking around for a uh, a candle or a lantern or something. Okay. Uh, I would say, yes, there is that lamp, a uh, oil lamp over off to the side. Uh, and it is dimly lit, you actually find. Someone's been here. So we'll this go isn't in here at all. Oh. Hmm. I'll go first. And uh, yes. I'll take the lantern in one hand and my hockey stick in the other, and I'll go into the basement. All right. As you approach that opening uh, to this trap door, the sound of machinery gets louder, and that sound of hissing. Like, as you get closer and closer to it, it is obviously the source of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you descend that first step, step by step. One, two, three... And suddenly out of the darkness, a hand, an arm larger than a uh, normal arm of a creature reaches out of the darkness. It's made up of torsos of human bodies. The feet, the, the, the gnarled, grizzled uh, fingers on it are legs wrapping out. The foot, feet still on the tips of it, wrapping out to grasp at you. You get a monster attack. That is the uh, the oh, part that the director part of this scene. Oh, a surprise monster attack! I love that. Yes, okay. and uh, so the dismemberment goblins have been building a flesh golem. Cool. Oh, this, this is this. You see, Mouse just pulls out a little baggie of Smarties and looks at it. Does it count? Looks back at the thing. Does it count? Sure, I'm seeing this. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna uh, swing at it with my hockey stick. Yep. So uh, there is a uh, there's a test involved uh, for the scene. It does say brains TN three. Okay. But the director yeah. says you can cause a monster attack at any time during the scene. So I, I'm guessing with a monster okay. attack, Shireen, uh, people use uh, any test. It says specifically, um, 
in where is it where is that it's very specific spot it says come on here we go if the monster attacks trait cho checks work a little differently each player in the scene chooses which of their trait character's traits they use to deal with the monster and then you have to beat the tn on the monster so we get to choose um yeah so it would have been what it said in the book unless if you had not done the if monster you chose not to do the monster yeah all right okay so uh i'm going to physically attack it because that's my uh that's my <laughs> my highest one and uh when i am making a body check that's my quality uh, my TN is always three. So that is one hit, two hit, three hits, four, five hits. Wow. Nice. So I, uh, I think since I was first down the, um, I know, and I had the, the two short people behind me, uh, <laughs> I caught a really good, it, it was trying to grab with its disgusting, uh, grabby legs. And uh, I jump on top of it instead, like pinning Ooh. it to the stair. All right. So the other people, I think everybody has to make the monster check. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to use brains. My brain. <laughs> Delicious brains. Uh, which is, oh, yeah. I have one, two, three, four, five hits. Okay. Three of, those, nice. three of those are ones. One is a six, and the other is a three. You have to. And beat I, I want to re-roll. Yeah, one. you have to beat a four for the. You yep. have to have four hits to beat this monster. I'm re-rolling my. Uh, my. What page is this? Well, those were yeah, those were all hits. That's those. They were yeah. all hits, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So five uh, hits. Okay. Then I am. I think Mass is just trying not to run screaming, so that's a spirit for her. <laughs> Contemplating whether or not she needs some assistance to make it through the rest of the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, that does not hit for, uh... Oh, no! Her spirit. Three oh, ones no. and two fives, so... <laughs> oh, no, you fail! I failed. <laughs> So, okay, using stuff in yeah. the... Does it work after rolling? Uh, technically, you're supposed to use it before, but... Okay, okay. so I'm not going to worry about that then. This, but this is what's going to trigger the next step of it. Is, yeah. I need assistance now. All right, <laughs> so you... Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so Shreen, your character jumps over onto the arm... Yeah, uh, and it reaches. It continues to reach up past you, uh, and grabs Corey, or maybe just like the, the sharp calluses <laughs> on the heels of this creature's fingers. You know, oh, oh. fingers rip into you, <laughs> doing, oh. and you lose that dice that way. Not gonna have any fishnets by the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, health wise now? You're at four. After still. that, before anybody else makes me lose life with my failure, I'm at four. <laughs> <laughs> yep. okay. So, uh, do you uh, at this point do, does the scene continue, Shireen, or does it move on to another director? No, uh, Stacy, what did you get? I just I I just got five hits on brain. Okay. So I was gonna so figure out like the source did... of this thing like how to how to stop it like quickly and it is an amalgamate like, i would say it's a, you discover it's this amalgamation of flesh and steam powered uh Ooh. that is lo you know giving it locomotion playing <laughs> your little mad scientist thing in there uh <laughs> and so uh you could either destroy the source of its steam pressure or jam the gears somehow that are part of the internal workings of this creature. I'll jam the gears. Ooh. Good 
good idea. There's like a broom or something. Yeah. Yeah. Is there? Is there a broom? Yeah. Yeah. I'm absolutely. Use a, broom. use a broom to jam the gears. MacGuffin. Broom. Yes. <laughs> well, in a basement. It's crowbar. Reasonable. Plunger. Um, but because I succeeded at my track, I'm still going to decide that Stacy loses a die. Okay. Uh, because oh, hurt jamming it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it's strain on your muscles. You're not you're not used to this uh kind of athleticism. Oh. I and you succeeded, I, so you get to decide now too. Who else loses a die? You pulled a muscle. In okay. your shoulder when you attack. That's not revenge. It's just the easiest thing to think. Of. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. So y'all are all at four now. I'm at four. Oh. Yeah. Yep. yep. So another scene. Mm. Okay. Or another another uh, another die roll. Another director. Hey, we're yeah. the smart girls club. <laughs> Ooh. Smart okay. in Ross's so case. <laughs> I think the director now. I'm we're going back to me as the director. Okay. So let's uh six and a three. Which is nine. If I am not Yes. Okay. Um, so you, uh, you managed to, uh, destroy this creature, and, uh, so that would make, John, you're the lead player now. Okay. Uh, or character. Uh, you, you shut off this, you jam the gears, uh, in this horrific machine, uh, and it stops, uh, and collapses. Um, but there is, uh, still a noise happening, uh, in the background and, uh, it is, uh, like a really repetitive kind of, um, chugging sound. Uh, but you can't quite tell where it's coming from. Interesting. Uh, now, is this me outside where I had been? Oh, yes, that's right. Sorry. You, okay. So you were outside uh, mm -hmm. standing on the porch of the, uh, or you'd wandered off mm -hmm. to stand in a patch of moonlight and... Uh, you know, write some poetry about how you were feeling a little bit. Because, <laughs> you know, like, you're really hoping that once your podcast takes off. Absolutely. You know, I, you know, um, I love your poetry. Yep. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm kind of, like, doing emo voice as I'm writing it, because I'm like, that's how you get good poetry. I would yeah. be the one to, you know. And... <laughs> Um, and you hear this, of course, horrific crash when the, um, the hand attacks, uh, but then, you know, that is suddenly over and then you can still hear this chugging sound and it comes like, it sounds like it's coming, you're outside and it kind of a little ways away from the, um, cabin and you hear it coming from beneath you. And those of you in the cabin uh, can still hear it, but like it's like coming through the wall. I, uh, you know, I'm out here in the dark, reach into my pack, pull out my night vision goggles, and start looking around at the ground, uh, trying to find whatever's making this sound. You said it, it's coming from below me. Yeah. Night vision. Does it, does it also have heat vision? I don't think so. I think it just literally says night vision. Oh, night vision goggles. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So you find a uh, a hole in in the earth, like a a tunnel, like it goes down, uh, and it kind of goes down and in, uh, and so you can just barely see with the night vision goggles uh, a little bit of light that's coming in uh, to this hole, but you would have to like jump and slide down into this hole if you wanted to do that. You don't entirely want to do that because there's no monster attack in the scene. Uh, you don't strictly want to feel like doing that right now. <laughs> yep. I, I, I yell out for everybody. I'm like, hey guys, I think I found something. You just yell. Yeah, absolutely. Can we hear? Can we hear you? Yeah. <laughs> I think every other <laughs> I think the goblins can hear him too. Exactly. That's why it's so funny. Uh, horror movie, come on. Yeah, I know. That's why it's so <laughs> funny. Um, so we're going to be doing a brains check to be investigating the source of this noise. You have to get four hits. Now, my item, does it do anything for me with this? Your items. Okay. Yes, I, I pulled out those night vision goggles. That's right. So let me just have a quick look here. Stuff. You gain a bonus. Uh, yeah, so that'll give you an automatic hit. Okay. So, obviously... So one. Yeah. I roll my dice. I succeed, but I only get two successes doing that. So okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, you get automatic hit. Yeah. Yep. But I still lose the <laughs> test. Oh. Two hits on one die. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Yep. This is brains. Yeah. Brains of you need four hits. Yep, so okay. it doesn't happen to me. Okay. I am... <laughs> I am going to use one of my items to give myself a little chemical. Either I'm going to... Feeling good, or I'm going to use it to get... Oh, you're cut out I'm not bit sure what. I'm not going to use my trick just yet. If I survive, okay. then I will. Okay. But... Okay, because it does give you an automatic thing, but yeah, I'm gonna go with the more fun option, which is either I'm going out or I'm going out. <laughs> okay. Uh, hilariously, I fail. It, it's a near thing, but yeah. okay, like I have three hits. Nice. That's funny. So. Okay, so you lose your dice. I lose a day. I'm under. Okay. I'm at three now. Okay, so that's two two characters at three. So we move into Act Two. Oh, does uh, Stacy need to roll? Yeah, Let's... we were like, I can't. I wasn't sure. Were we still in the basement? And he was outside. Yeah. Okay. I think we called you, and you, uh, you came out. Okay. There's okay. like a dual, dual shot, like him on one side, us on the other, kind of like tell. Yeah. The, you remember that? I gotta do a brain. Movie? Oh yeah, brain roll, brain roll, brain roll. All right, yeah, I, I, all of them are. Wait, uh, I got, yeah, I hit four hits. Nice, four hits. I mean, it's I, my brain is one, so you were the smartest. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you figure out uh, that there's some kind of um, uh, engine running in this uh, underground space uh where you suspect the uh dismemberment goblins are doing some uh some work uh in one of those like you know in a in a cartoon or something where they like like parts go in on one end and then it goes into the machine and then mm -hmm. like a zombie or goblin comes out the other yeah that, that's what's there Ooh, guys, we have got an interesting little doohickey here. It's creating these golems. Let's see what we can 
due to but it. Because maybe, maybe you, it's because you succeed. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Because you succeeded. You get also get to choose somebody to lose a die. Mm, I want Morgan to suffer a little longer. So Corey, you're gonna lose a die. I'm beyond suffering at this point. I'm out of dice after yeah, that you failure. Are out of dice? Yeah, I'm, okay, so I'm, I'm about to have my death scene. <laughs> oh, you're out of dice. Yeah. He's O O D. Okay, he so we'll have to deal. He is wrapped. So we will deal with that in just a moment. I need to go have a quick bio break. Yeah. I was so, just about to ask for one. Yeah, so we're going to pause on yeah. a cliffhanger. All right. Uh, a couple of minutes and uh, we'll be right back. All right, be back soon.
And we are live and back. All right. Uh, handing it off to you again, Shereen. Yeah. So um, just as, as uh, the very, very end of the last scene there, uh, our uh, intrepid investigator, Morgan Graves, uh, is standing above this uh, tunnel, assuming that Right, the goblins have dug this tunnel to get into this uh, underground space. And um, uh, as you uh, are all talking, uh, a goblin leaps up out of uh, the the hole uh, and attacks you, uh, Morgan. Now, I'm going to let you describe how you die, of course, because this is the uh, best part. Uh, <laughs> but you just have to keep in mind... Uh, that according to the monster uh, rap rules, when your character is wrapped, their body parts keep popping up in other scenes. You decide <laughs> when a body part pops up, what body part it is, and who finds it. So whether <laughs> that dismemberment happens immediately or later on is entirely up to you you get to describe how your character dies before we move into act two. Okay. And you become a producer. So the, this goblinoid creature leaps up out of the ground and uh, it's got this long needle in its hand the, the, with a pipe coming off of it. This, this, you know, rubber hose. And as he jumps up, he jams it into my character's chest. And he's just like, ah! And we hear that sound of that machinery. Uh, and it starts chugging, to yeah. chug even faster. And my character begins to expand as he is filled with steam <laughs> and air. And I, with you know, he's just like, ah! And then kaboom, this explosion of body parts everywhere. And I think that's a fitting end for Morgan. And I didn't know poetry. we were going to go with inflation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, steam in steam pellets. <laughs> that's oh, amazing! No. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so All right, gross. Gross. And, of course, <laughs> and of course, as soon as he had found this spot, he'd set up the tripod, right? So the ca and he just happened to leave the camera in just the right spot to capture this entire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can have <laughs> convenient mood moonlight, you know. <laughs> it's a nice spotlight. The only flaw in his character was his flirtation skill. That's going to be what it says on his epitaph. His death started with his inability. Wait, wait, with his left. Okay, let me start over. Let me start over. His uh, <laughs> re-roll. <laughs> his death began with his lack of game. Who is a damn good cinematographer, though. We will give him back. So Thanks out for Morgan. <laughs> May he rest in peace. That is yeah. in the so, chat. Now we're all <laughs> in the chat. Now we're all traumatized uh, by having witnessed this. Um, you, John, you are now a producer. Uh, the producer rules I had uh, initially posted that so they're in the yep, book. There are three people left, so I get three points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do get three points to use. Uh, you can use those at any point. You can interrupt us. You can wait till we finish the scene. You whatever, whatever you feel like doing. Uh, so that is on uh, ninety four, I believe. Uh, once per scene, you can use your producer points to do uh, a number of things. So uh, now we are into Act Two. Uh, so it's, I guess that will make Stacy the director again. Mm -hmm. 2d6. Uh, yeah. And then right. and two is on page 48. Oh, we got we got eight. The chase. Ooh. Okay. So. Oh, the chase. Yes. Does that mean? 
we were I doing it with the left, right? So that would make me the lead. You'd be the lead. Okay, I'm the lead. And then uh I'm gonna obviously just have uh have Corey in the in the scene as well. Um <laughs> so I I, you know, come up to find you and then I witness this uh horror. Okay. Uh mm -hmm. so set up this chase for us. Okay, so the explosion has alerted the authorities. <laughs> so not only are you being chased by cops, you're being chased by these weird goblin things, and no one knows what the fuck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> so police arrive and they see us covered in blood and then they see these fucked up goblins and everybody's running around and they're like they just jump in and try running around instead of imagining the keystone cops music we're all just yakety smackety yep. <laughs> we go the door and we come out the other door and like the scooby doo thing so okay, so basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. I am one hundred percent behind that. I, I, mind yeah. you, it is now our jock, the six foot six six pack <laughs> hockey player, <laughs> and our tiny, not our tiniest, but the tiny little golf girl. Braver, who is, yeah. yeah, who is now barefoot, by the way. <laughs> and the soundtrack for this moment is Dance Macabre by Ghosts. <laughs> I dig it. I can get behind that. What's our, uh, our trait check for this ridiculous scene? <laughs> so, it is a body <laughs> Varying wildly, having <laughs> this awkward romance, and then it turns into this like absolute horror show, and then it's like Keystone comedy, <laughs> it's like comedy, and then... this is Grindhouse, yes. Yeah, yeah masquerading. Uh, this is how I really die. <laughs> now is where I'm shaving my. <laughs> my uh my trick where i'm talking my way out of this i'm not talking to the cops who are chasing us because now that's just another level of my character yeah. i am talking to the goblins and i'm like look tell you what i'll find you another source of body parts i know when the next rave is you're gonna have your choice and they'll be too stupid and up there to really know what's going on with them just don't eat me yet don't eat me until after that I'm gonna hide with y'all. <laughs> like, like she goes into one of those doors, and it's like there's a cop chasing behind her. Then she runs into this group of goblins. And she's like, you know what? I'm on y'all for right now. <laughs> Got a choice between goblins and cops. Goblins, I'm gonna take the goblins. Down. I'm taking the goblins. Yeah. So that is one of her tricks used, <laughs> which removes myself from the scene before I make a trait check, and no one can reduce my life pull as a result of trait checks from the scene. That's amazing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Just like I, I made my choices. Yep. So I'm gonna sacrifice the next ray of the goblins. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I know where there'll be a bunch of stoners. The easy pickings. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Do this. Trail. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Just, Just pulled like... apart an acid trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Best stretch ever. <laughs> she figures she's still just tripping, like none of this is really happening. Like she's just yeah, I'm just at this point I'm like, I'm having a bad dream, bad reaction. Somebody gave me the bad stuff. I'll be fine. I'll wake up in a couple of days with a rough hangover. Some snacks, some energy drinks, I'll be fine. <laughs> Everything's good. I, I I love that my character literally sleep like was sleep sleepwalked into this. And then like, what? 
Wait, what? With a whole ass hockey stick. <laughs> I was just here to lift heavy stuff, okay? Well, now you're doing the uh, heavy lifting of getting our asses out of here. <laughs> Hopefully. You can, Hopefully, you can, like, one of us arrives. You can run through with, like, one of us on each of your shoulders. <laughs> Or at least, like, <laughs> our scientist friend here. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is, what does it say for the scene that I'm supposed to... Uh, yeah. Um, that I'm supposed to roll for? Okay, this doesn't tell me anything. Hold on. Oh, do I have to... Is there more information uh, is in this pages? For the, uh... For the chase? Yeah, the chase... No, just what... If it should say... So body, uh -huh. t it's right below it. It says body TN4. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now I get it. Yep. I'm learning to read okay. this. Body TN4. Got it. But mm -hmm. I have Better a thing run. that says that it's always a three for me. For body? <laughs> yes. Nice. Okay. And for... So that is... Yeah. But I have uh, a body of one. I, I think I would point. like to spend a production point. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I am going to uh, spend that point to do a character rewrite. Okay. And oh, no. force a player to use a trait you want them to use when dealing with a monster attack. So I am going to say that you need to use some spirit. Oh. <laughs> okay. I have a spirit of three, yeah. and I rolled a one, a two, a two, and a four. So that's one hit. <laughs> oh and no! I, I do not. I do not pass that one. Sorry. <laughs> <I'll be> sorry. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, so I'm trying to carry uh, both of you, uh, and I I hurt my back, uh, trying to have both of, on each shoulder. Am I am I even in the scene though? Because I'm the director. Oh, that's oh. right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm oh, somewhere I'm, else. I'm, it's just, yeah, you're I'm somewhere else right now. Yeah. yeah, and I and yeah, you yeah, thought right. you had both of us. Turns out you just had two goblins. <laughs> you just grabbed in the dark. <laughs> Your goblin back ride. Oh no! <laughs> I have to run away. <laughs> I go in one door carrying two people. I come out another door carrying one person and a goblin. I go in another door and I come out carrying two goblins. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't even realize it's there. I don't notice that it's happened until I get into the end, and then I'm like. And I just drop them. And I run. The spirit. <laughs> um, oh. I'm at three. Uh, Corey, where are you at? I'm at two because I talked my way out of the situation. I saved my neck. <laughs> How many does Stacy have? I'm somehow at four. What the fuck is going on? Nice. Oh. <laughs> my neck's so big Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we are I'm at Tori being the director. Yes. And oh, Stacey oh, oh. is the lead character. Sweet. This is gonna be fun. Give myself some more room to roll here. That's a ten. What is? Tell a story. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a mouth target number three trait check. Uh, the lead character tells a story to the other characters. In the it can be any kind of story. If it's a scary story, it has to have a jump scare. If it's a romance story, it has to end with a kiss between two characters. Uh, and the director, at any time during the telling of the story, can change one detail just mentioned. The lead player must adjust the story to accommodate the. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ooh. So during this whole crazy thing, mm-hmm. I'm just out here telling a story to whoever's left alive. <laughs> And the goblins to your, camera, to your camera because it's to the camera. Oh, that's right. Your live feed because we're we were doing the found footage thing, right? Yeah, so this that's right. Pops thing is going on in the background, and you're on you're on. So do yeah. I roll? Do I roll first and then tell, or do I tell and then roll? You usually do the scene and then roll, and then okay, yeah. you okay. do like most of the yeah. scene, and then you can kind of roll to see if you like okay. land the joke or whatever. So I'm holding the phone in front of me. <laughs> guys, guys, you have, you, the, I, I saw the most amazing thing. It's this thing that turns body parts into other things. And it's, it's, oh, it's so good. I don't know if you can hear me very well. Here, I'm going to move this closer. There we go. Oh, but, but. <clears throat> it's. Um, well, once upon a time, when we were investigating this, this thing with goblins, there's, there were two, two star-crossed lover goblins. (laughs) (laughs) That after they created a flesh golem, but they decided to adopt it as their child. Unfortunately, they could not get this child, this golem child, to listen to them. So he ended up cleaving one of them in half, hamburger style. <laughs> I watched this happen. I swear to God, this is this is so this is so real. I did this. I watched this happen, but right before the light left his eyes his lover just came and just gave him a nice wet sloppy golden retriever kiss upon his lips and then they they sobbed holding holding his entrails in his hands against against in their hands against their chest. <laughs> okay, I am to do one specific thing. Not all of their entrails, just their heart specifically. Aww. Mary Shelley style. That's what I'm changing. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's so sweet, oh, I could cry. <laughs> no. It was so sweet, you guys. You don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> There's like murder stuff happening in the background. Well, uh, and don't forget, my uh, body parts are supposed to also feature in these scenes. Oh, right. They're supposed yes. to pop up. So I can imagine as you're telling this story and you've been talking with your hands, you're actually talking with my hands in your yeah, hands. Yeah. You just... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And now I have to, now I have to ask his partner if I can dissect his head to get his brain. So I really need that brain, you guys. I really need that brain, you guys. I, I need it so bad. You have no idea. Oh my god, can you imagine a world with a mad scientist who a live stream? It'd be popular. It would be popular for all the wrong <laughs> So many hits. Oh, that'd be awesome. I'm sorry, that's really funny. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um. Okay, so now I have to roll. That's mouth. <laughs> Uh, mouth is two again. Once again, I got four hits. I got a two, a five, a four, and a three. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> That's like a. That's like a. What do they call that in, in poker? Oh. Uh, flush. Flush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Straight. Straight. Uh, straight. Which, a straight. Which is kind of impossible. 
helpful in this is this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> you just like you went viral. Like your, your live stream like went viral and now there's just like that. You're racking up like a million hits. <laughs> oh my god. I love this. Really need his brains, you guys. Um, yeah, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> this is great. Alright, uh, does anything <laughs> go for me? Brain. <laughs> from, from my brain removal. So I Click the link in now. my bio. <laughs> Scene succeeded. I don't think anybody yeah. loses. Uh, no. I... no, I think we we skipped over that one. So everyone wins this one. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody dies. Um, except for the <laughs> goblin. Except for the goblin. Yeah. So just, who's poor Jeremy? <laughs> Oh, I love it. Jeremy spoke in class today. Uh, <laughs> so who's the director now? I it, I was just the director, so it's it uh, does it flip? No, well, you're not. I'm the director because I you're the director. Now. Wait, oh, you no, I the, was not. No, you, were the, you were the director. I was the main character. So. Yeah. It I should guess be I... Stacy now is director, and director. I think Corey okay. is main character. Either Corey's main character or uh, Shireen's main character. One of the two. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, as long as it has it, it's to the left of you, so it's like to the left was... of me. Yeah, and I was well, looking at actually. Right. It would be. Uh... We're gonna go by John's camera at this point. Yeah. <laughs> If it was on my camera, it would be, uh, then it would be, sorry, uh, it would be Stacy, if I'm looking at that one right. Stacy would be the, yeah, Stacy would be lead. The so it is, it is flipped. I, I, was, I was just the lead. Oh, yeah, then, I was going by my Then I guess it goes to, setup. there we go, then it goes to, yeah, Shireen. Yeah. Shireen. So I'm director. Be, yeah, now that I'm out of there. Shireen. Okay. And Corey is the lead character. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Because we well, committed the producer. greatest horror sin now. What? We Who's are all that? separated now. My yeah, so somewhere. I am somewhere pulling up with goblins, apparently. Yeah. Then you're somewhere being chased okay. still. A six. Oh, you rolled a six? Party. A party? I'm supposed Wait. to go from this nonsense and do party. <laughs> oh no. Wait. We all just run into each other. Like, the end of the monologue is my character just walking into the scene with the goblin lovers. I'm just like, they're acting it out behind my aunt. I'm just watching. So you got, you eventually <laughs> all end up back at the cabin somehow. <laughs> and uh, uh, the cops have met with the goblin leaders and are having a discussion outside. Uh, most of the most of the cops are outside, uh, but the characters are inside, and uh, one of the goblins, a uh, friendlier goblin, uh has found some booze uh in the uh in the cabin somewhere. And so they've broken it out uh and everybody's had some drinks because uh you know trauma and someone's turned on music and uh suddenly you were having a party apparently yeah I, I guess uh so slumber party masker G G for goblin Slumber Party Master G has uh, all the best chill out tracks. Um, <laughs> they're they're really into like down tempo and ambient and like vaporwave in the Goblin I, world. It's I that's kind of that. vibe, you know. I get it. I can. Uh yeah, they're it. really yeah. So uh, he's got like neon sunglasses. Um, <laughs> So you're having a very chill party. It's still a party, but it's very chill. Um, 
uh, my character is, uh, I don't know, making out with a hot goblin in the back bedroom. There you That's go. Uh, another goblin who also had a six pack, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Standards. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's, there's <laughs> the scene just comes up randomly, and then it's just like, there's just a party. There's yeah. no no party. special, nothing happens. Your like character doesn't have a party. Yeah, there's a bouquet effect around the the uh, camera, just because somebody wrapped it in Christmas lights that they found. Why not? Oh, this so is, this still got, somebody still got Morgan's camera on the tripod. <laughs> and they brought it back inside. The goblins have co-opted his streams. <laughs> <laughs> They're now getting in on the found footage, so it's them oh, yeah. acting sometimes. <laughs> it was a, uh, at one point it was a paranormal stream, and now it's a mukbang. <laughs> <laughs> it's a paranormal mukbang. <laughs> oh, that's so gross. <laughs> I gotta put that on Tumblr. They will love that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's, it's, you get to have a party and you roll for spirit. Oh, sweet. God. I am, you know what? I'm gonna fail so bad. I have to roll a TM4. You do. I'm not. Oh, God. I'm not talking my way out of this. This is just too funny. I don't mind failing this one. Are you serious? Oh, and hey, I'm, I, uh, I'm upping have... the stakes. Ooh. By the way, I'll spend one more point and I'm upping the stakes. Uh, is nice. everybody having to make this test? Mm hmm. Well, yeah. just. Yeah, technically. Just the players. Just the players. All right. So for upping the stakes or increasing the stakes, increase the TN to five for any one trait for one player during the scene. Okay. And so, uh, Corey, <laughs> I'm upping the stakes for you. That's so mean. I mean, it, I wouldn't have passed anyway. I only have two dice. <laughs> Which hilariously, I got two hits. So <laughs> and now I just failed by three instead of two. <laughs> I got three hits and I have an extra die. Still, because I'm still at fucking four. You're gonna walk away from this thing. Bat batshit crazy. <laughs> gonna do another one. Uh, yeah, nice. I have I have four successes on spirit. That's amazing. Nice. Nice. I'm done to one. <laughs> do what I left. I I think at this point my end is just going to be like okay we don't make it to the next rave they're hosting it right now <laughs> I go out alcohol, and of alcohol poisoning <laughs> <laughs> You're drinking to cope yeah mm -hmm. uh, so poor, poor Goblin Jeremy uh, <laughs> This is getting so weird. Um, I got Jeremy's brain in a hat box. <laughs> and then we see, like, the remains of Jeremy, because his brain is now in the hat box. But Morgan's brain is now in Jeremy. <laughs> That's why there's the camera. <laughs> because we have to spy parts of the scene. But we, but we know it's his because they labeled it like they do in the old Batman show. <laughs> <laughs> so tag was Morgan's brain. brain and Jeremy's body. <laughs> no, Jeremy's oh, heart. It says Jeremy. Yeah, he's wearing a t-shirt that says Jeremy on it. All the goblins wear shirts with names on them. You know? Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> um. So two or more characters are at three life or less. I'm at three life. You are at less than three life. So, and you're still at four, but that's fine because I believe that does mean it would triggers us into act three. Ooh. Oh no, sorry, that was act one. I was looking at act one. Act uh, three. Uh, 
half the characters three, are left, yeah. or all characters at three at life or less. So we yeah. are still in act two. Yeah. Okay, so we still got one more. Okay, so I guess that moves to Stacy as the director. Oh, cool. And me as the lead player. So roll 2d6 and add them together for the scene. For act two still. Yeah. All right, that's a nine. So go off alone. The lead can Ooh. invite a maximum of two other characters into this scene. The characters <laughs> wander off alone and make themselves a target for the monster. <laughs> nice. And apparently I can cause a monster attack at any time. Nice. Okay, okay so why are we wandering off alone? Um... Oh, I, uh, I come up to you and I'm like, hey, uh, you, you got any weed? What, the Smarties? No, but I got these. Let's go outside. It's just one. <laughs> I don't want them to see. Hmm? Yeah. They're, All right. All right. You can't tell my coach. I don't even know who your coach is. Okay, good. <laughs> Coach is like really, really rough on me about like drinking and, and having fun and stuff. He's like, you can't do that and then be good at hockey. I'm like, whatever, I totally can. I'm always good at I'm hockey. Having, Duh. I mean, y'all got enough brain damage. I don't think it's going to matter. I'm fine. My head is fine. <laughs> Doctor said I have a thick skull. It's good. I can believe that. Besides, I don't need brains when I got this. And, I, and she has to show off her, her six pack. Suddenly, Jeremy's bereaved partner <laughs> comes in, runs, run, yeah. rushes, rushes you, <laughs> holding Morgan's left leg as a club. <laughs> I mean, I'm out of this. <laughs> and there, and th there, you notice the shirt, the shirt, the name on their shirt is Cosmo. Oh, okay. Cosmo, Cosmo okay. is very upset and wants revenge. <laughs> okay uh i'm going to use my uh my body i guess to 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 jump out of the way of uh of the the swinging club leg mm -hmm. uh okay whoops i'm going to talk my way out of this by sympathizing with it's oh, just like hand on their shoulder just kind of Takes a couple of tries to hit the shoulder of this. <laughs> and I get you. Jeremy was so. Helped me out of a bind just a few minutes ago. Man, I miss Jeremy. But I'm out of tricks now. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that's three hits for me. Is that, uh... Oh, yeah, let me check. Enough? Oh, yeah, uh... You need TN4? Oh, dear. The four? No, you're not. Yeah, I only have three dice left. Uh... Oh, how about... Oh... So, so, so that's it. Yeah, I'm down that's to two now. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I tried to, I try to dive out of the way, but I, I dive the wrong way. Like, I, I kind of fake him out, but then he catches my fake out and actually wallops me. Oh no. Corey, <laughs> how many how, how many did you have? I had one, but I talked my way out of the scene. Like That's I went off right. to go cry. <laughs> Over Jeremy. Perfect. So I'm down to two. So I believe that puts us into act three. Woo! <laughs> yeah, two or more characters are no, that's act one again. Come on. Two. 
all characters are at three or less. <laughs> you are a holdout. <laughs> so I have to lose one now. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll, okay. Or somebody dies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or somebody dies. I can no longer uh, talk my way out of a scene, so. Yeah, I can. have it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I still have four dice. I have not lost a dice. <laughs> All right, and that means I am current director, right? Yeah. And uh, and Stacy is lead character. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, this is the fake out scare. The characters <laughs> uh, venture into a scary situation together, uh, and. I can introduce the fake-out scare whenever I want. I can <laughs> cause a monster attack at any time during the scene, but only after the scare. Nice. That's That's set up the scene. That's great. Put my director dice over there. <laughs> nope. Oh my god. This is just... Um, yeah. The, the, your mouse can you... <laughs> Oh, that's great. That mouse has run off to go cry somewhere. Okay. My aunt Cyan comes to go check on Juliana. Yeah. yeah thank you. Juliana. Uh, uh, after being, yeah. being walloped. Yeah. After being walloped. Just doing some little first aid. Taking a blood sample. Taking a blood sample for reason. You don't need to know the reason. Okay. So I guess I don't need to know. I'm yeah, sure it's, nice, fine. it's a nice quiet moment for you to tell uh, discuss what's yeah. happened so far in the movie. So like, gossip about mouse a little. This uh this has been kind of fucked up, right? Um uh, on a scale of I'd say maybe about a six. Oh, I never saw a guy explode before. Oh, uh, 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 no, neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Um, <laughs> and as you're silent, just watching Cyan, <laughs> you both hear rustling in the bushes. Oh, I'm going to my hockey stick. Get it's behind just a it's just a little bear cub. Nothing Aww. special. Oh, it's so cute. Chasing the bear cub is like one of the bigger gobbles. Oh no. <laughs> hey, you leave that poor little cute bear alone. I want right. I I wanna use my dynamite. <laughs> I mean this could be a good uh moment for it because it's a spirit roll target number four. Oh nice. Yeah. Okay, so what I want to do <laughs> is light my stick of dynamite and stick it in the goblin's mouth. <laughs> and then roll away. It just goes, gives you an automatic <laughs> gives you an automatic hit if you use your item. So cool. And I'm using a production point. Yes. My last one. So, uh Rather than the stick of dynamite, we're doing a budget cut. They could not afford the prop for a uh, stick of dynamite. And as you reach to light it, you are actually lighting um, one of my arms to try and throw it. <laughs> and realizing Smoke that. <laughs> yeah, you, you try and light it and then you throw it and it, the arm just flies through the air end over end, smacks the goblin on the chest and he looks down at it. And so there's the budget cut. You don't get your prop. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man, that would have been a perfect line, though. Shove it in and smoke him if you got him. <laughs> I mean, it's so... You're it just... You stuck yeah. the, the the bone end of the yeah. dismembered leg into its mouth. You thought it was a stick of dynamite. No, it's just a callus that you struck a match on. Yep. <laughs> you said it was an arm, right? Arm, legs. arm armed and dangerous. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Firearm. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I oh I got I got uh two hits. 
Do I still need to roll? You still, yeah, but you, okay. get, you get a bonus hit because you uh, yeah. the item. So well, you no, know that my production point takes that away. That item's oh, it gone. took it away. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you, lose it. Oh, okay. yeah. you have four Great. dies to hit it, your spirit. Okay. Well, I'm using my batshit crazy still. So I gotta... Oh, yeah. I got four hits. <laughs> you are hanging on. Wow. I am not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> character. Plot armor. I think we've got our final girl. <laughs> plot armor, yeah. This yeah. Seriously. You're you're the actor playing this character is like uh dating the director or something like that. <laughs> hmm. Damn with the egg sucks. I can see you it. You can hold your breath for a long time. <laughs> So <laughs> that gets me down to one dice. <laughs> I, I'm down to one. Oh I'm, no! I'm next. I'm next. Uh, it's either you or me next. Yeah, and we might come out together. <laughs> Holding each other. Like I've always loved you from the moment I saw you. <laughs> oh, I was gonna. I was gonna be like, but that goth chick is hot, right? <laughs> Wait, that's your niece. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, so, goes to see. Oh, okay. But you, you succeeded. You get to decide which one of us loses time. Oh. <laughs> which means uh. one of us has to go. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Since I was the director, I think that automatically excludes me, doesn't it? Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. So sorry, it's sorry. my turn. I get to You're, go. I'm I, so sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, jock death. Jock death. I think, uh, I, I go at you, you throw, uh, the, um, the, the arm, the firearm. The firearm <laughs> at the his label on the side of the firearm. <laughs> on fire. Just fake fire though, like Yeah, it's yeah. It's like, like right? streamers. Yeah. Streamers. <laughs> it goes through the air. Right. And and so I come running after it with my hockey stick. Um and I swing at him, but I'm very tall and the uh goblin is very short and I splinter the hockey stick uh on the uh on the tree and then the goblin shoves me into the hockey stick and it goes through my neck oh no <laughs> and there and there's like an absolutely excessive amount of really not very good fake blood that's like too <laughs> red and it's a little too runny it's not with the right consistency, you know? It's like ketchup mixed with a little bit of a... Uh, You're a deli chocolate vinegar. sauce, the white chocolate syrup. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm like, somebody, whoever put, put the, the pressure on the hose, like, turned up way too high, so it's just like... It's like, whoa, <laughs> like, the spraying way out here. Yeah, it's completely ridiculous. Oh, that's beautiful. What? I still have a really fantastic six pack at the end. Oh yeah, that that, <laughs> that six pack is untainted. Yeah, untouched. Untouched. The goblin will discover me later, Glisten. but it's still glistening <laughs> in the moonlight. <laughs> in the moonlight. Um, so I get two producer points, uh, <laughs> and we'll see. We'll see. Okay. It's just uh, the aunt and the niece now. So <laughs> I guess I think that would automatically move us into Act Three, I believe. Yep. And we should mm -hmm. we should get into Act Three anyway. So um, <laughs> the rules just decide that, even if the rules don't strictly, you know. Sometimes it it's like it's rules. Yeah, they're all, I mean, it even says in the beginning of the book, like these are guidelines. You know, mm -hmm. do what you want. Uh, so, Act 3. Uh, now, yeah, because one of you, so, because, uh, because we're down to two people, 
uh, we can, this is now, you can have the director have the character in the scene. Ooh. Um, just to, you know. Starring and directing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I guess since Corey, you were just the director, right? Yep. Okay. So now, Stacy, you're the director. All right. So roll for act three. Three. Uh, talk your way out. So we refer to monster <laughs> for trait checks. And it's a five. We have to get like five. And friends, yeah. Yeah, TN five. Oh, no, it says TNs with yeah, an F. Yeah, TNs. Oh, no, that's might be. Yep, TNs. No, it's a little bit difficult to read. It's fine. It's a good um, font, though. Um, okay, so we find a way to talk our way out past the monster or out of danger. <laughs> okay, I could use, I could introduce a monster attack at a dramatically inappropriate inappropriate no appropriate moment <laughs> or inappropriate, and, <laughs> inappropriate yes, sounds better. <laughs> and characters characters using mouth to deal with monster attack gain the automatic hit okay gain one gain one automatic hit okay i i have to make a i have to hit a target number of two on one die i'm not making it out of this alive <laughs> This is my final scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how are no. you trying to talk? What is the scene? <sighs> Set up our, our your scene there of the the uh, how how are you go- trying to talk your way out of this? Look. Wait, you're the main character, right? Yeah, I'm you go first. I'm main. Oh god, you're gonna you're the director. <laughs> I'm the director, but I, I, I want to hear what you got to say first. <laughs> where are they meeting? Where are they meeting with the leaders of the goblins? Yeah, there... we're we're meeting in the cabin, in I, the dining that's, room. That's where I retreated to go have my little cry, and the the goblin sh- captain is, you know, confusedly offering comfort for tiny goth girl, uh, <laughs> like just. It looks up as Cyan enters, just like, like, she's yours, right? Yeah. And then, hey, now it's not. It's like, You're cutting out. Oh, I'm probably talking to you quietly. If I am cutting out, make sure. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Eh. I'll move my a little closer. There we are. Now I'm seeing myself actually pick up on that. But no, it, like, the goblin just looks up at you, like, just my head on their shoulder, and it's just... Right. So... Let's... Let's talk here. Okay. I have a proposition. An offer that you cannot refuse. In return for access to your machinery and all of your research data on these flesh monsters, we can accrue you bodies and body parts. What do you say? Oh. Um, She sounds... Yeah. That could be a Arranged, I guess. I mean, like I'm a good bait, good first body. This suddenly, is suddenly, two flesh golems run in, burst through the door. <laughs> One of them is on fire. And they're screaming and howling, and they're starving. And, uh, and I, I use my producer point um, to say that uh, yeah, we we're still low budget, so uh, the one that's on fire is again on um, fire with streamers, 
creepy paper. And there's, <laughs> and there's like there's like a fan, you know, like, to blow the the streamers just, up. A red sentai suit with like silk, yeah, silk veils, yeah. like just tacked on. Mm-hmm. Like these aren't <laughs> even like multiple torsos anymore. You just see that they're just zentai suits with like drawn on stitches and body parts like kind of made out of like styrofoam i saw somebody had this it was like a dollar store thing for halloween it was like a hand that was attached to an arm and they had it hanging out of their trunk right so like you just they bought a bunch of those and then like sewed them onto the suit yep (laughs) a couple of fake arms and so they are not scary at all these. One of them. One of them isn't even an actor. The one that's on fire is a blow-up doll in a red zentai suit. <laughs> Wacky waving inflatable arm. What? <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh, and now you're both your characters pretend to be scared of it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. Please, no. No. <laughs> right. like, like, into the actor playing the goblin mouth just kind of turns because she's trying not to laugh and she's trying to make it look like sobbing. Fear. <laughs> <laughs> and failing miserably. It's just... Oh. <laughs> One of the prosthetic ears is kind of dangling off. <laughs> it's just getting worse and worse. <laughs> this movie but just getting... started out okay, and then just... <laughs> this is the problem with filming in chronological Budget get cut. Yeah, get and that's yeah. it. Yeah. What are going to do? Yeah. You need to start the low budget stuff, or the high budget stuff first and then do the whole bunch of mm-hmm. stuff. I don't know. I don't know how to film. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess if you only have one guy, uh you're you Yeah. I believe that is the end of Corey's character. That is. And my and character. My, my sibling's child. Look how they massacred my sibling's child. <laughs> How, what am uh... I gonna tell Susan? <laughs> it's... Maybe I can rebuild her. I mean, sequels need to exist. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's the name oh. of this film again? How oh. did you die exactly? How did, how did she? <laughs> she... I just like the, the fiery flesh monsters that have been put together by these goblins stain and we're gonna roll with the fact that they acknowledge that you're not scared of these things at all that shit crazy after all right yeah and so they're just like you know what it's a deal she comes with us though that's a fair deal that's a fair Uh, deal and i just and it that I, way I can come up with a good story, you know, so they don't think she's dead. Yeah. And I mean, they're very no. respectful with my body. I don't think at this point. So, because uh, the baggie of specials parties is now empty. Um, and it, it, nice clean cuts. You help them, like, with the, like, Y cut scenario everything yeah. and that camera pans out a lofty a lofty choir of of sopranos <laughs> oh, i just end up being the protagonist of the movie <laughs> subverting tropes that's how the ma- the tiny little mad scientist becomes the hero of the, the story the hero. because she's also tiny little mad scientist she's what you said four three right yeah you're one of them by this point i'm round (laughs) when you see uh, in the post credit scene you see her putting juliana's abs on something (laughs) 
<laughs> Meta- menopause really just set me over the edge. <laughs> Is this whole and we start now this whole new genre of like pro villain movies? <laughs> it's all told from the position of the villain being the good guy. Cut, cut, to, my, cut to cut to Madame Sian Twist and <laughs> feeding her, her friends body parts into the machine. <laughs> Seeing what comes out the other side. Uh. Yeah. Well, the, oh. <laughs> to end credits. Uh. And as the end credits roll, we get those like little pop-up pictures that are like mm-hmm. just kind of behind the scenes. There's a close-up of like a very obviously fake work ID card that says Cyan Twist works at a body farm. <laughs> and that's where we get the title card is Body Farmer. One. Yeah. To be continued. Da, da. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh, great. I love this game so much. Yeah. This is wonderful. Ah, oh, my cheeks oh. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so many great laughing. moments. No That's why it's called my laughing. <laughs> <laughs> It's so it's so easy to make the most and I, I really like that we ended up with a lot of really weird um orders to the scenes. Yeah. The scenes did not come out in any sensible order whatsoever. Okay. This is not a movie that's gonna be winning a Cannes award or anything. No. It might be a for this picture at the Razzies. It might it might become a cult classic where people get together, share a bowl, yeah. and just yeah. watch it. And watch this land bowl. a TV yeah. series twenty years later. Oh no. <laughs> the, the twenty year later T V series takes a serious setup of a movie. <laughs> Directed by Wait, wait. I had something for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think... Directed by J.J. Abrams's uh, second nephew. Yeah. <laughs> niece. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mr. Is Jeff Dudley. Niece's child. Oh, you're so cute. So cute. That bow tie <laughs> is so precious. Yeah. He's the producer. He's the owner of the movie studio. Oh, mm-hmm. the best! <laughs> oh, 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 oh God! I'm, I'm like, well, so I know well, Shreen, is there anything else we need to do to wrap the game? Or no, that's uh, that's the end of our. We we've, we've rolled the credits. Uh, awesome. It's kind of it's kind of over when we decide it's over. So. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks so much for for getting into it, and uh, <laughs> I'm glad you guys all had so much fun. Yeah. And thank you, thank ridiculous. you to John for being the first victim. First <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for it. I was actually wondering if I was going to die like even earlier. So it's all good. <laughs> when you yeah. fail so hard at, <laughs> at flirting, you actually die. <laughs> you well, <sighs> no, I crazy. mean, What's isn't that longer hyperbole? I think that's kind of a thing is like the cringiest person usually goes first. So. Yeah. <laughs> you would hope. Uh, you would hope. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Or or mm-hmm. if you have a really, uh, if you have a, a, a director or a writer with his, a, you know, an axe to grind, then uh, then it's anybody who engages in, in any kind of romance has to be punished for it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, or, or, they, or if they're not engaged in the right kind of romance, then they have to be punished for it, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't well, want that bad romance. Yeah. Well, really quick, uh, just to toss out there for viewers and everyone uh, coming to check out later, uh, yeah. I do want to be sure to say uh, th- thank you to players. Thank you so much, Shireen, for bringing this yeah. today. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you, Stacy, for coming back and joining us. Corey, thank, thank you, you for being a rock and coming on, even though you hadn't even s- scheduled to be here. <laughs> so <laughs> thank fine. you. I'm not even <laughs> supposed yeah. to be here today. But I am. Yeah. Uh, I was and, one of the last two alive, so hey. Yeah. 
So uh, coming up, we have uh, on the 26th of this month, we have Aloy LaSanta, uh, any award winning writer with Third Eye Games. Uh, he is bringing part time gods uh, to the mm -hmm. channel. So that's one of his properties where yes. it's about people, uh, everyday people who discover all of a sudden that they have uh, the spark of a deity within them. So they are doing their damnedest to exist as a mortal and yet at the same time be a god. Uh, so that is coming later this month. Uh, next month on the 16th, Corey will be, uh, debuting, uh, their game, uh, the Red Bud Engine with the Vampire of Campeche. Yes, so, I'm looking forward to that one so much. And at so. the end of November, uh, I will actually be in the GM seat for First Contact, which is a uh, RPG where it has to do with uh, a lot of space tropes where uh, our players make up part of a fleet and are dealing with a first contact situation. So That's awesome. That sounds so fun. That sounds like fun. I, uh, uh, I got to write with uh, Eloy Santa on O-Run. Yeah. Uh, the first Ooh, game I ever wrote for. Book. It is beautiful. That's beautiful. It really like, it's like also like non-standard. Oh yeah, it's not. It comes in a oh, little no. box and everything. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh... Oh, it's a really nice book. Really, really great. Uh, I mean, I start getting into layout. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beautiful stuff. Ooh, anyway, I like that. Um, awesome. yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, if you want to check out uh, Die Laughing or the. Uh, Sequel, Die Laughinger. Uh, you can check that out at uh, nerdburgergames.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, the uh, if you get the PDF version, it's fantastic. It's all um, set up so you can just click and it'll take you to stuff. So Nice. Um, yeah. And I'm glad you guys had fun uh, being oh, yeah. doing ridiculous uh, uh, horror movie. It got me into the very Halloween mood. Uh, despite the fact that it is today Canadian Thanksgiving. So oh, wow. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go uh, pig out on a bunch of food. So. Awesome. Yummy. Well, thank you for guiding us. All right. Yeah. Well, everyone, we will see you all back here uh, for our next episode. Tome Travelers will be coming up soon as well. But in the meantime, hey, seriously, let's play. Let's play.